it's Jeff Summers with Watch You Know. Today we're going to be doing a double review of these two enormous watches. This one is the Invicta Bolt Zeus, and this one right here is the Invicta Excursion. I'm going to tell you about the watches in an overview, then I'm going to take them outside, let you see what they look like in the sunlight, and then give you my opinion. Uh, finally, I'll give you a history of Invicta. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Hello people. We are checking out these two monstrous watches. On the left we have the Bolt Zeus 31931. On the right, we have the Excursion model number 6471. Both watches made by Invicta. The diameters are massive. This watch right here, the Bolt, is 53 millimeters across. Okay. Um, the excursion, 51 millimeters, a little bit smaller. But this watch just feels a lot bigger and that's because of the height. Look at the height of this watch. It is 22 millimeters tall. I'm going to be using a few other watches just to give you some reference to how big these are. So let me grab my Gucci and I want to show you something. Look, the height of this watch is, is about more than half of the height of this Gucci or the diameter of the Gucci, rather. The height <laughs> are, look at that, very <laughs> radically different. Um, so, the height on the excursion, 16 millimeters. Not as tall. Let's put this one back there. Um, the weight is phenomenal. And what I found when I looked up the weights of these watches was some misinformation. For some reason, Invicta and other places that are selling these watches tend to increase the weight of the watch. And I'm not sure why they would do that. Maybe in some circles the heavier the watch the better uh I, not in my circle however uh maybe that's true for some so i don't get it but anyways this watch right here um well let's start right here excursion it's the lighter one and it weighs in at 11.2 ounces the bolt zeus is a whopping 12.7 ounces. So let me just give you an, an idea. Let's move this one off to the side. Let me show you um, what that equates to in other watches. How many watches does it take, there's one, to weigh in at the same weight as this one watch. Here's another one. Here's another fun watch. There's the Timex Marlin. It's a Ferrari watch. Go. It's a full one here. Okay. Let's get in. There's another. Here we go. All right. And right there. Okay, so that's 10 watches. And in fact, 
It weighs more than that by a little bit, not quite as much as an, another entire watch. But that is crazy. Imagine having 10 watches on your wrist. Um, now this one right here, boom. This watch, the excursion, is no lightweight. That's about seven or eight watches, all right, of, of these here. All right, now, I admit they're not the heaviest of watches, but still, that is that is a crazy, crazy thing. All right, let's move on. Let's get all these other babies back. All right, here we go. Now let's focus here. All righty. Now, since we've talked about the diameter, the height, and the weight, um, the chronographs are sta is standard on, on this watch. To so start the chronograph on this one, we start it here. You kind of right click there. See how it's going? All right, it's going around and then um, to stop it, of course, use the same one. And then over here, the left one will reset it, okay? And what I meant by standard, really, if, if I wasn't so clear, was that the you just have uh, you know, your standard second hand, and then it has this, this right here, which is you can calculate the minutes. Uh, the excursion is a, is a little bit um, different, and I think in a good way, um, we have, where if you push the starter, you can see you can see we have a tenth of a second hand that's going around. And then of course we have our second hand and then you can stop it. All right, and then you can calculate to the tenth of a second as to um, you know the time on it. Um, and then you can and then you reset it and, and it really resets really quickly. Um, where the Zeus um, does not reset as quickly. Um, both use a quartz movement. Um, the Zeus uses a Ronda 260 FE, which you can pick up for about 40 bucks. Um, not the watch itself, but the, but the movement, if you were going to buy the movement itself. Um, and the excursion uses a um, ETA G10.2 to 11 and that being an ETA is a little bit more expensive coming in at $60 for just the movement. Um, I don't think I mentioned uh, the, the type of crystals that are being used on this. This uh, Bolt Zeus uses a standard mineral crystal whereas this excursion uses a flame infused crystal. It is a synthetic sapphire. All right. Um, now, in all honesty, all sapphire used on watches is synthetic. They're not using actual sapphire. It's it's, uh, it's synthetic um, that they're using, whether they say it or not. All right. Now let's talk price. All right. In this this overview here, um, the prices on these watches you will find very dramatically. I'm going to tell you the price to not pay any more than. <laughs> All right, so let's start with the Bolt Zeus. I have seen this um, going for as much on the internet now for $1,000. Now that is absurd. Uh, do not pay $1,000 for this watch. All right. um, you are... <laughs> You, you um, can find this watch for somewhere around $175, right? And I think the reason why that $1,000 is even a possibility on the internet is because of the MSRPs on Invictus are jacked up so high. And, um, all right, let's close this. That box seems not to like it. Whenever I make a comment that is not so pro Invicta, it falls over. So stop that. <laughs> All right. Now, um, so don't pay over 175 for the watch. Maybe 
maybe you can go to 200 but that you know that's my recommendation you can get it for around that and that's what i paid um this watch the excursion since it does use like there's an 18 karat gold plating and it has that tenth of the second feature in the eta it's a little more expensive and you can find this watch around two to two two fifty uh, in fact i would look at getting it on the lower end i saw it on amazon for 300 but i've also seen it other places for 200 and that's about what i paid for it um, so there you have the the uh the, the clash of the titans humongous watches and now let's take them outside and let's show you what they look like outside in the sunlight Okay, we're outside with the Invicta Bolt Zeus, and you can see its incredible height. It's a 53 millimeter watch, and this is how it looks like in the sunlight. Going over, switching hands and switching arms, we have the Invicta Reserve excursion and this is how this looks out here in the sunlight all right there's that and there is that all right So now my opinion on the Invicta Bolt Zeus and the Invicta Excursion. Two humongous watches, as we know by now in the video, that these are very heavy. In fact, both watches are heavier than this can of Pellegrino water. So... When you wear the watches, you're gonna feel them on your wrist. And I play piano and trumpet, and when I practice, I would have to take either of these watches off my wrist because I cannot practice correctly. It's such a weight on my wrist. So you'll definitely feel it. Other things about these watches that I wanna share my opinion on in regards to the differences and um, just general likes and dislikes of these two watches are on the dial with this watch here it's very very easy to tell the time not so much over here because everything is that gold coloring and actually it is a gold plating it's an 18 karat gold plating on this watch a thin plating but nonetheless that is a nice thing to have. I like how the stealthiness of the pushers are on the Zeus. They're right here, this, this square, gold colored. That's the start, and here is the uh, start and stop, and here's the reset. The crown pulls out, and you can adjust the date and the, uh, the day and the time. This What's nice is you have that one-tenth of a second. That is awesome. And other things that I might like would be yeah, not much. <laughs> not much nowadays. Uh, I used to enjoy huge watches but my tastes have changed and i rarely wear these but when i do i always get somebody complimenting me or not necessarily complimenting commenting is the better word on the watch what is that on your wrist is a common thing that is said Yes, it is a good starter for conversation. 
So you will have that advantage when you wear this watch. People will want to ask you about it. Another thing I should add is that this has loom. This one does not. So it's, it's nice to have that loom. Alrighty, so now we're going to hear about the history of Invicta, which is quite fascinating, I find. Invicta, which is Latin for invincible, was established in the year 1837. Raphael Picard founded the company in La Chal de Fonds, Switzerland. One of the brand's main concepts was to sell fine Swiss watches at reasonable prices. In 1932, Invicta invented and patented its first automatic movement. This technical advancement established an innovative precedent for the company. Important to Invicta's history are the watches that were made for the USSR Naval Fleet officers in 1959. Although the validity of Invicta's ties to the USSR Navy is questionable. This was exposed in an article that originally appeared in the Russian publication, The Chelyabinsk Worker. The 2010 article was entitled, Real History Behind Famous Zlothaus Diver Watches, or Enough of Your Lie, Mr. Invicta. Two great Invicta watches of the next few decades were the Invicta Diver and the Invicta Surfboard. The Invicta Diver of the 1960s was large for the time, but would fit right in with most watch wearers today. The Invicta Surfboard Chrono of the 1970s was a unique watch and used a wonderfully manually wound Vajoy 7733 mechanical movement. However, during the 1970s, the brand was almost forgotten because of the quartz revolution when winding watches were no longer popular. Back then, Invicta was not churning out quartz watches like they are today. Electronic watches such as Casio and Timex were pushing Invicta's manual watches out of the market. In 1990, Invicta started its Pro Diver series with its jeweled automatic movements and high water resistance. These watches have been highly successful throughout the years and are a good value. In 1991, Invicta was bought by an investment company based in the US. Up until then, the company was owned by the Picard family. Company headquarters were moved to Hollywood, Florida in the USA. In 2004, Invicta was renamed the Invicta Watch Group. That's when things really started to change with Invicta watch designs and marketing strategy. It should be noted that Invicta has been a charitable company. Invicta established the Invicta Care Foundation in 2006. This nonprofit charitable foundation came to life in the hopes of improving it with a dedicated interest in helping, serving, and empowering those less fortunate. For example, the Invicta Care Foundation raised $127,000 to help provide relief for Hurricane Katrina victims. In 2008, the Invicta Excursion was born. With the case bottom contoured like the hull of a speedboat, the Swiss timepiece was made to have the look and feel of a powerboat in watch form. In 2011, Invicta Watch and its family of brands appeared for the first time at Baselworld, which is held in the city of Basel, Switzerland. Baselworld is the most important trade show and experience platform for the global watchmaking industry. In 2016, Invicta Watch Group acquired the historic brand Glycine. To learn more about Glycine's partnership with Invicta, check out my review of the Glycine Combat 6. Also in 2016, the Invicta Watch Group began its collaboration with the Walt Disney Company, creating the Disney-themed Invicta Watch Collection. Honoring the heritage of comic character culture and in collaboration with DC Comics, in 
2018, Invicta Watch released the limited edition DC Comics collection. Today, Invicta is experiencing success as a company. Its marketing strategy is working with an estimated $350 million in revenue last year. That's $100 million more than Omega. So with this said, why do Invictus have such a bad reputation in the watch community? Well, let me give you my top three reasons. First reason is that there are quality control issues reflected on many customer reviews. Consistency is just not there. The second reason is MSRP is jacked way high. Buying a watch for $250 when the MSRP is $1,000 misleads customers to thinking that they're getting an incredible bargain when they actually are not. And the third reason is that gaudy over-the-top models, which are the impression of Invicta, when you say the name to most watch collectors. Watches with 70 millimeter diameters and over-the-top radical designs turn off a lot of people from looking further into the brand. There are some, some examples of more reasonable size Invicta, such as the Pro Diver 1953, which is a fantastic watch. But we can't ignore the almost cult-like following Invicta has. Fun fact, did you know that every February 3rd Invicta enthusiasts board the ship Carnival Victory? From Miami to the Bahamas, these die-hard Invicta enthusiasts are the reasons why Invicta does so well as a company. They love Invicta. And if you love oversized watches that certainly will be conversation starters, then maybe you will love Invicta too. Hey, thanks for watching that video on these two enormous Invicta watches. I really appreciate that we have a growing channel and it's well over 130 subscribers at the moment. Um, Consider subscribing and helping us grow. At least give us a thumbs up and I look forward to making the next video. Take care and have a great day. Bye.